Hello everyone. I am Jennifer Grable, Family and Consumer Science Agent with the North Carolina Cooperative Extension. I work in both Person and Granville counties and I basically teach food and nutrition, health and wellness, and chronic disease. So I'm going to be talking to you today about a little bit about all of those different topics. So the uh, first thing I'm actually going to talk about is an event that we have coming up next Tuesday on Tuesday, August 27th at the County Office Building here in Person County, we are hosting our annual Aging with Gusto event. It is a fun day that um, we start right at 8.30 in the morning and we have a variety of different organizations around the community that have different booths set up that you can visit and get information from them about their different topics, whether it's health or um, aging, scams, fraud, um, budgeting, all kinds of information. So we've got a lot of good vendors that you can go and visit. And then we'll get started with the program about 10 in the morning. They, uh, the participants will be doing two different workshops. We've got three workshops in each of our time slots, so they get to pick two. The workshops, we have one on Outsmarting the Scammers by Ford Bradshaw from Edward Jones Financial. Uh, I will be teaching a workshop on how to plan healthy meals. We have a uh, workshop about getting around in Roxborough from our PATS director will be there because they've changed a lot of their different routes and we want our older adults as well as just the entire community to know about different services that they provide. The CARTAR Council of Governments, which is our area agency on aging, will be there to talk about what is gusto and how you can live with it, how you can age better, how you can feel better, and things that you can do along the way just to help yourself. Um, we're going to have um, Dan Burrich, who is the rehab director from Person Memorial Hospital, doing a little physical fitness for our seniors. And we're also going to have a workshop from, um, actually I'm going to be teaching that one, but it is developed by Becky Schneider who recently was a employee of our Person County Library. She's actually moved on to Virginia now, but she had developed a workshop on fake news and media literacy. Specifically, we wanted this workshop to be about how to maneuver the news and things that you hear with regards to your health. Um, you always hear that this is a good diet, this is bad, don't eat this, this thing. So how you know that the information you're getting from different sources or even friends, if it's a good, reliable source, if you can believe what that is with regards to the health topics is what we're going to be focused on. She, she's developed that PowerPoint and presentation and handout. She had taught that at our local library a couple of different times and she had developed it, but then she got a new job. So she's passed that information to me. So we're going to put that health twist on it. All of this information will be available after the event if you can't join us at our Agent with Gusto event next Tuesday, August 27th. If you have not registered and still want to, you can possibly do that. You can run to the Extension Office, which is located at the County Office Building. Um, and pay $12 and fill out your little regist registration form. All participants will receive a goodie bag when they arrive as well as lunch is provided and we'll have some breakfast snacks and some entertainment. So we have a day full of fun and uh, we'll even have some door prizes at the end of the day. So if you're not able to join us this year, this is an annual event that we have. It's Aging Gusto is always the last Tuesday of August every year. We always change our workshops and have different vendors and organizations, so we'd love to have you. We have about, I think about 75 people registered this year, and this event is both open to Person and Gramble. We typically have about 20 people from Gramble that come over as well. So it's kind of an area event there, so that's then. Um, also, I want to remind everyone that every month our Extension Office hosts Lunch and Learns. It's a uh, lunch workshop. Typically, they are the second Tuesday of every month at 12 to 1 o'clock in the auditorium. They are $5 to attend. You get a nice, healthy, delicious lunch as well as a packet of materials about whatever topic we're going to be talking about. So this uh, coming month, September 10th, we're going to be talking about developing a household and food budget because that often is a, uh, a barrier to a lot of people. They want to eat healthy, but then it's too expensive is what they always tell me. So we're going to provide some tips about how to do that 
and uh, how to get around different issues, how to plan your meals, how to use different shopping strategies in order to balance whatever budget you have. So it's tools specifically talking about food, but we are going to you know, give you some information that you can just to do an overall household budget. That workshop is actually uh, the information from that one on September 10th, our Lunch and Learn, is provided from our More in My Basket program. That is a uh, statewide program that com comes to us from NC State University, which is one of our land-grant universities within the North Carolina Extension Office. And um, that program helps promote the SNAP program, the SNAP benefits. So if you don't know what SNAP means, it's Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Otherwise, it used to be known as food stamps. We have about 1 million people in North Carolina that are receiving SNAP benefits, um, but we have about 1.6 million that are actually food insecure. That means they have difficulty getting food or they live further away and don't have as good access to food in order to have a good healthy lifestyle. Um, unfortunately, there's about 20% of people that are eligible to receive SNAP benefits that do not, that do not participate because maybe they don't know about it, they don't know how to apply, different things like that. Um, but of those people, the one million that do participate, nearly two thirds of them are children, elderly, and disabled. So I know a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about food stamps, SNAP benefits, different things like that, but we're serving a lot of our, um, our elderly population and a lot of the children that would not be getting uh, food. If you're interested in seeing if you qualify uh, for that program, if you'd uh, like to see if you might uh, figure out how to apply, there's a 1-800 number that I'm going to give you that you can call and our uh, representatives for the More In My Basket program from NC State are on hand Monday through uh, Friday from 8 to 5 and they can help you take kind of your information. You're going to have to answer questions. They'll help fill out the application for you. They will mail you the application and then you take the application to the local DSS office here in Person County and they will tell you if you qualify and how much uh, SNAP benefits you might get. And there's a big range. Some people receive $16 a month, some receive $250 a month. It, it's a huge range. It depends on, uh, you know, like I said, your, your income, your expenses. You are allowed to deduct medical expenses now. So if you have a lot of medical bills, you very well may qualify. Um, you know, as I mentioned, we've got about 1 million uh, people participating. But I know that with seniors, we have about 50% of seniors that are eligible do not participate. Some of them just don't know about it or again you have to fill out the application online, do different things and they're not comfortable doing that or they just don't know how to go about it and um, we can provide some assistance for that. So if you want to call 1-855-240-1451 and again um, <clears throat> that number is for the More In My Basket program to see if you qualify for SNAP benefits. You can go online to morefood.org. That is their website. They have a lot of recipes, uh, blogs, information about um, you know, doing a, having a budget, food insecurity in general, how to go about applying. It has all of the information that I've kind of mentioned to you on their website. So you can go and check them out. And if not, then just share it with someone that maybe you know. So. Um, one of the things that I usually talk about with Rob is just overall nutrition. So with me today, if you can see me, I have a, uh, a my plate. Um, for those of you that are listening uh, through the radio, you can always go to uh, choosemyplate.gov and get a lot of different resources. But basically, the thing that you need to know about my plate, which used to be the food guide pyramid. Um, years ago, that's what we learned. It hasn't changed much, just the, the look of it has. So half of our plate is supposed to be fruits and veggies, and the other half is supposed to be a uh, small portion of proteins, and then a section of grains, and then don't forget the, the dairy. But the main thing that I always tell people is the star of your show should be the fruits and veggies. We're always so focused on what the protein is. What, you know, what am I gonna have for dinner? Is it gonna be chicken? Is it gonna be pork? Is it gonna be, you know, some type of meat? And then, then we focus on everything else that goes with it. And we need to get away from that mindset. 
because the protein should only be about the size of the palm of your hand. That's appropriate portion size of protein. So a lot of it is we're getting way too much protein. We're not getting anywhere near the fruits and veggies that we're supposed to get because it's supposed to be half your plate. If you think about what you're going to have for lunch today or what you had for dinner uh, last night, was half the plate fruits and veggies? Did you have any fruits and veggies? Were those veggies mainly starchy veggies? Because if it's a starchy veggie, then sometimes it kind of falls in that grain category because the grains and the starchy veggies, they're just full of starches and it turns to, to sugar and then that causes a lot of problems with diabetes or even heart disease or different things like that. One thing that you will see either about my plate or if you've ever seen a my plate poster, or if you go online to the Choose My Plate website, you'll notice it's very colorful, <clears throat> okay? Because we want people to, we often say, eat a rainbow. And uh, I'm not talking about M&Ms or Skittles or Fruit Leaps or any of those other colorful foods that a lot of people like to eat. I'm talking about the colors on your, your plate. You. Um, need a lot of color. Specifically your veggies, the colors that we recommend mainly are the dark green leafy vegetables and the orange vegetables. Those are packed full of the most nutrients. The vitamins, the minerals, all of the different things that you need. Um, I know a lot of people will take supplements, take vitamins or minerals or different things in the morning. We want you to get your nutrients from your food. That's where you're going to get it. That's also where you're going to get less uh, calories. <clears throat> if you're eating a lot of fruits and veggies, unless they're fried or unless they're really starchy or unless you have them covered in cheese or ranch or something like that, for the most part, these are going to be healthy for you they're gonna be low calorie, they're gonna be low fat grams. So it's overall gonna help your entire, your entire body there. Your grains, <clears throat> I'm a big bread eater, so <laughs> I understand that. Um, and that's not something I'm, I'm gonna give up, but I'm trying to do it better. And that's what I always tell people is just make a change. When I teach uh, weight management classes or I teach diabetes classes, whenever we're talking about nutrition, we're focused on starting wherever you're at and making small changes. I don't ever tell people, you know, don't ever eat this or cut this out of your diet because you'll probably run into me somewhere across the county and you'll see me eating that very thing. <laughs> it's all about moderation and it's important with your grains for it to be um, a whole grain. That's the focus with the, the grains is so, yeah, I might try to eat a little bit less bread, <clears throat> you know, don't hog out on that bread basket when I go somewhere, but I'm trying to change if I do go somewhere, if I do have it at home, having whole wheat bread. Um, instead of putting, you know, butter or something like that, I'll make olive oil toast. It's a, it's a different type of fat. There are good fats and there's bad fats, and we'll talk about that in, in a little bit. But can I get some whole grains? Most of us, we need about six um, <clears throat> servings of grain a day, or most of us are getting that. Only one out of those six tend to be whole grain. We need it to be half is what we need it to be. And we're not focused on that. So um, we always tend to, to focus on that and that protein. So um, let's try not to, to focus so much on some of those areas and let's worry about some of the others, okay? So we're gonna talk some more about this, but first we're gonna get a break and uh, talk, listen to one of our sponsors. Here in August, we're starting to head towards fall season. And we can already be thinking about cooler days of fall. That will be here before you know it when we really enjoy getting outdoors again and doing the fall lawn work. And it's also time to kill those weeds in the lawn to be ready for fall seeding. T.G. Brooks Company has the chemicals to do it. T.G. Brooks Company is fully stocked for fall. And meanwhile, if you still need irrigation, they have plenty of irrigation, such as hose and sprinklers and piping. For your work in the yard, they have yard tools like rakes, hose, shovels, diggers, choppers, pitchforks, pruning saws, loppers, wheelbarrows, lawn carts, and lawn sweepers. And for your fall flower bed, they have your hardwood mulches and dyed mulches and that really good triple ground mulch. They have mulch in bags or by the trailer or pickup load, and they can arrange delivery if you want it. So this year, beautify with fresh pine needles for planting and get some topsoil, planting soil, and cow manure. And by the way, they also have 
Pride dog food, including the Pride Pro Series. Don't forget to make some homemade ice cream on these August and September days. No matter if you're a homeowner or a business owner, they can fill your fall needs. And also, if you are the professional landscaper, they can handle commercial accounts. Everybody loves T.G. Brooks Company. And by the way, there are some storage buildings available, and uh, they're ready for you to uh, come and talk with them about the new storage buildings, brand new ones, and uh, thankful for those storage buildings that are right there, part of the T.G. Brooks family in Timberlake. Stop in often, stop in this week, and be sure to ask about those new storage buildings when you're there visiting at T.G. Brooks Company. Welcome back. Um, thank you for our uh, word from our sponsor, T.G. Brooks. I always appreciate the sponsors and them uh, supporting the Extension Office with our Gardener's Corner program. I know that T.G. Brooks, I often send people there for canning products. Um, you know, throughout the year, I always get a lot of questions about canning, and uh, they always have uh, jars and canners and all kinds of uh, information as well as supplies there. So they're a good resource in the uh, Timberlake community, and I definitely recommend you utilizing their services. So I'll talk a little bit more about canning later, and we'll get back to them. But first, I want to finish talking about uh, my plate. I kind of talked about most of the, the different sections, but I, I just started talking about proteins. Um, a lot of people will come and like, oh, my doctor's told me to stop eating red meat, or I've been told I need to do this, or I heard, going back to that uh, fake news we've talked about with a lot of different health-related topics, I've heard that this is bad for me, or this is not good, or I need to eat more of this. Well, again, a lot of times, there's a couple of things that I talk about with protein, is portion size is probably one of the biggest things. You're gonna see me eat red meat, and I'm not gonna tell you not to eat red meat. I might tell you to eat it less, because we tend to eat a lot of it. Um, but I know too many cattle farmers. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, again, it's just about how you cook things, the portion size that you're cooking it. Um, I love my red meat. I definitely want to support the farmers here in Person County as well as Granville County. Uh, portion size, again, the size of the palm of your hand is about the size that you need. So that tells you right there, it's about three to five ounces. Again, it depends on your, your gender, your height, your weight, all that kind of stuff as well as your activity level. But when you go to a restaurant, the smallest steak you can order is an eight ounce typically. Well, I just told you a portion size, appropriate portion size for most people is about four ounces. So just when you go out to eat, get your steak, but ask for the to-go box as soon as you, you know, they bring you your food and cut that steak in half and put half of it away in the box so you can take it with you. So it's not, you know, enjoy your steak and you get a second meal later. Take some of your veggies, take some of your other foods that you have and you make a to-go plate right there. Because what we tend to do is we sit down and we start eating. We're talking to people, next thing you know, you only meant to eat half the steak, but you ate three-fourths of it or the whole thing's gone and you didn't really want to eat all that. And then you kind of feel uncomfortable and stuffed and, and whatever else, and you don't have enough food to save for leftovers, so you just eat the rest of whatever's on your plate. So just go ahead and get that to-go box right away and put half of that food in your box. It'll save you money, because you got two meals for the price of one. It will uh, save your, your waistband right there. And um, it'll also just save your, your heart health, because you're, you're not putting too much, uh, you know, bad meat. There's different types of meat too. Um, <clears throat> again, there's some red meats that are very lean and then there's some that I go and it's chocked full of, of fat. So try to get the leaner meats. If you're buying um, ground beef, getting the 93-7% lean meat is much better than the 70-30 or 80-20. Uh, I know that you can buy the 70-30 and 80-20. It's cheaper. I also know that you can just, you know, cook it and drain the grease off and even, you know, pat or whatever. You're not going to get as much of the grease off as if you just buy it leaner. I also will buy ground turkey um, sometimes because it's, you know, a little bit less expensive. Not because it's necessarily healthier or leaner. Again, it's based upon what percentage of lean meat I get. So trying to get the cuts of meat that have less fat on them 
trying to get the leaner cuts of meat. We have a continuum that we often refer to with people eat this, uh, you know, eat more of this, eat less of that. And um, <clears throat> red meat tends to kind of fall actually in that middle. Um, the white meat of poultry, which tends to be your, uh, your breast and your wing, that's actually on the eat more end of the uh, continuum. Red meat's kind of in the middle, but your dark poultry, your darker cuts of meat is the, um, the chicken leg and the thigh. Those are actually on the eat less. So again, depending on the cuts of red meat and the amount of fat on it, it could be somewhat healthier than your dark cuts of meat of poultry. Now, in order to get the darker meats of poultry a little bit healthier, taking the skin off. Again, portion size. Don't get the big bucket of chicken and, and just go to town on it. So there's different things that you can do. We tend to recommend eating um, red meat maybe two to three times a month. That's what the Mediterranean diet actually recommends. Um, <clears throat> but just eating a little bit less. Eating more fish and seafood, which is very good with um, omega-3 or omega-6 fatty acids. It's got a little, a lot of good fat. It's the difference I was talking about with my bread you know, not putting the butter on it, but putting olive oil on it. They are both a source of fat, but this is unsaturated fat with my olive oil, and the butter is saturated fat. So a healthier type of fat versus one that's gonna have um, things in it that would hurt my heart. So you wanna stay away from the saturated fats and the trans fats. Looking at nutrition labels is really the only way to do that. I was teaching a uh, workshop yesterday and we were talking about that then. I can't tell you if this is good or this is bad. You really just have to look at the label. Um, I often get asked about margarine versus butter. Well, I just mentioned margarine is a saturated fat. I mean, butter is a saturated fat. Margin, margarine, the stick margarine is a trans fat. So it can be even worse than butter. Um, the tub margarine is a unsaturated fat, so that actually has better properties for you. So you, but you can find stick margarine. I know a lot of people will bake with their different things and they want a healthier option. You know, I tend to maybe stick with the butter or if they have margarine that's made with a vegetable oil blend or something, then that's a healthier oil. It still has some of the bad oils in it. It still has some of the trans fats in it. But, you know, just finding that combination looking at the labels it's what's going to help you do that um, when people ask even just about mayonnaise you know is mayonnaise a good fat or a bad fat it depends on what type of mayonnaise you get and I'm not talking brands we're not going to uh, debate duke versus hellman's or anything but looking at that mayonnaise and they have some that is made with olive oil again made with a healthy fat so that could be a unsaturated fat olive oil mayonnaise again Portion size, how much are you slathering on something? How often do you use it? Look at the serving size of different things. Sometimes it's not what you're eating is bad, it's you're eating too much of it. People just, you know, often tell me, I didn't realize that, you know, I was eating as much as I was. So portion it out. Going back to, to the grains, uh, people often get confused with portion size. And so my example I always give is cereal. It always goes back to, to the cereal there for portion size. Cereal itself is, is not uh, a bad thing. A lot of them are multi-grain or whole grain cereals that are out nowadays. Um, now you know the ones that are not, <laughs> but looking at the labels will, will tell you if they are looking at the ingredient list. The first ingredient should be a whole grain is what it needs to, to say. In order for that product to be officially a whole grain, that first ingredient needs to be a whole grain oat, whole grain corn, whole grain rice, whatever the grain is, it needs to be a whole grain because you're getting the most fiber, you're getting the most nutrients. When it's not a whole grain, you're, you're, they've just broken it down and they've processed it uh, too much. So you're getting all the starch, none of the nutrients, none of the fiber, none of the good stuff from it. So, um, but cereal, <clears throat> go get your cereal, look at the box. Most of the serving sizes of cereal is about one cup, which is about the size of your fist, or about three-fourths of a cup, which, you know, is three-fourths the size of your fist there. Um, <clears throat> so take your bowl, pour your normal amount of cereal that you normally pour in that bowl. We all have this imaginary line that it's in our bowl, and we pour it to that. Take that and put it in a measuring cup and see how much cereal you're actually eating. It very well could be a cup and a half. And if you're supposed to only be eating three-fourths, you're basically eating double that. So your cereal that says it's about, 
150, 200 calories might be 300 or 400 calories um, because you're eating double the amount of, of servings. And um, also on that cereal box, when it talks about calories and different things, it says this is what your cereal is, but then right next to it, it says, this is what your cereal is when you add a half a cup of skim milk. So I'm only supposed to have a cup of cereal. I'm supposed to have a half a cup of skim milk. If you're not using skim milk, that's a lot more calories. If you're using whole milk instead of skim uh, milk, that's about 60 extra calories right there. And if you're doing double the amount of milk that you're supposed to be doing because you're doing double the amount of cereal, you could have your morning bowl of cereal be four to 500 calories, which <clears throat> it's not necessarily that it's bad, but cereal doesn't tend to fill me up for that long. You know, I have it for breakfast and then I come to work and about 10 o'clock I need a snack. So I want to make sure you're not getting too many calories from something that's not even making you feel full. So I often also recommend just, you know, changing up your breakfast a little bit, getting some different, you know, not just getting just the grains, you know, having some, some yogurt, having some dairy, putting some, some uh, fruit in there and then putting some granola. So you've got three different food groups right there with your yogurt parfait in the morning. Now, it's important not to get strawberry yogurt. You know, get the plain yogurt, put the strawberries in it because the strawberries have natural sugar. If you just get strawberry yogurt, it's just artificial uh, sugar in there. And we're getting too much of that. So just trying to make some different changes is, is very simple uh, to do. And um, <clears throat> I don't really care. You know, people always ask, well, should I get the fresh, the frozen, or the canned, you know, fruits or veggies? Whatever you can afford, whatever you like taste-wise is perfectly fine. The point of it is you need to eat more fruits and veggies. I don't care if they're organic, if they're conventional, if they're regular, if they're canned, however you can get them, just get more of them. That's the main thing is we're not getting enough of them. So whichever ways uh, that you can get it, compare prices. Oftentimes it's, um, <clears throat> it's cheaper to get it in canned or in the freezer section because if that fruit or that vegetable is not in season, you're gonna pay more for it um, because it's taken so much money to get it to your local store. About on average, I've said this before, I think it's about 2,500 miles to get your food from the farm to your store. So that's one reason we always recommend supporting local farms there's different farms around here that you can go and that you can buy on site. Um, you can also say go pick your own uh, strawberries or blueberries or blackberries or whatever. You also, our uh, farmer's market is always open. The one on Madison Boulevard across um, near Wells Fargo over there is open the first Saturday of every month from 8 to 12. So we have several uh, local farms that go there, um, you know, sell their meat, sell their produce, even have some that, that sell, you know, homemade goods, different things like that. So go support your local farmers. Uh, check them out online. We have a new app that is available to both Person and Granville County. Uh, the Extension Office joined forces with the CARTAR Council of Governments to the Visit Farms NC app so you can download that app on your phone and uh, you know it'll pop up with uh, notifications or different things if certain farms in your area are having events coming up it'll also uh, you know <clears throat> you can do a search if you're like I'm looking for this type of food or this type of product you know you can put that in your phone and it'll it'll let you know where in this radius are these farms and we've got about I think at least 50 farms in the uh, in the database and we're always looking to add more farms and it's within this area Orange County also has um, the that availability of that app too so you can find you know farms that are in person Granville Orange Franklin Warren Vance all around this area and go visit I know uh, my children often like going to different farm tours or uh, just going and seeing the animals and actually seeing where their food comes from and showing that appreciation to the farmers and and sharing that with them they they can ask a lot of different questions with their their farmers and learn where their food comes from so we can have an appreciation for for agriculture we can also try to figure out um, you know how we can best um, help our kids learn where their food comes from and make healthier choices and our farmers are really good about helping with that. So now we're gonna take another break and listen to uh, one of our other sponsors, South Boston Memorials. South Boston Memorials, located 1439, 
Seymour Drive in South Boston, Virginia, has been in business since 1958. The Myers family of South Boston Memorials believe that every life has a story. For four generations, their life work has been to present and preserve that story for our prosperity to hear. Allow South Boston Memorials to tell yours. South Boston Memorials has granite memorials, markers, and mausoleums over 300 in stock. In-house laser etching is available at South Boston Memorials, and they can also make pet markers. For memorial benches, vases, and monuments, call on South Boston Memorials at 434-572-3859 or visit their website, SoboMemorials.com. That's 434-572-3859. South Boston Memorials is located 1439 Seymour Drive in South Boston, Virginia. Like us on Facebook or visit the website, SoboMemorials.com. Welcome back. Um, again, thank you to all of our, our sponsors, South Boston Memorials. They are located in South Boston, uh, Virginia. Um, they uh, have a lot of different things to, to help out uh, your family during that time. Um, we're going to continue talking about uh, nutrition, but we're going to kind of take a, a switch a little bit too, is because one of the things I often talk about here when I am with Rob is food safety. Um, because while you're cooking your healthy, delicious, uh, hopefully, you know, good meals for you, uh, we want to make sure that you're following food safety protocols. Um, one of the uh, classes that I have coming up is for restaurants. So if you work in a food establishment, um, I'm having a food safety course, our Safe Plates course um, that is very similar to Serve Safe, I think more people know that one, is gonna be at the end of September. So if you are a, a either a food um, manager or if you are an owner of a restaurant, our food safety course will be September 23rd through the 27th from nine to 12 um, every day in the morning at the Person County Office Building. It's $135 to register. That covers all five days, your workbook, your materials, your test, all of that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you can register from now until September 4th. We have those forms available at the Extension Office. Or you can drop by the County Office Building and they're right, side, um, right outside my office as well. Um, again, our uh, Safe Plates Food Safety course, September 23rd through the 27th, but you have to register by September 4th, so I have time to order all of the materials. Uh, the reason we always do food safety in September is because September is actually food safety month. So um, <clears throat> whenever I'm talking about it with Rob, he's always asking me about uh, food thermometers and how to do this. I went to Walmart recently and um, <clears throat> I got a... Uh, uh, kitchen thermometer set. So these are available at Walmart. They have them, you know, just a refrigerator thermometer, just a, a digital thermometer, whatever you want to buy. I just bought an actual set. I think it was about $13 if I remember correctly. So there's three in this set that I have. It's a, um, this is not a digital thermometer. This is a uh, dialed stem thermometer, but it works the same. You just have to read the dial. And if you know what the food temperatures you know, what your food should be cooked to, then it's very easy to read, large print. <laughs> so that's always good. The digital thermometers are available there too. They're not that much more expensive. I mean, you can get it for, you know, $10 or you can get a really, really expensive one even on Amazon for about 80 bucks. Um, I, the, the simple $10 digital ones work just as well. And those are the ones that we recommend. Um, and I tend to get the brand Taylor brand. Um, <clears throat> those always worked very well for us. In addition to the uh, food thermometer, we also have a refrigerator freezer thermometer that is in this set because every year, whether it's hurricane season coming up or if it's um, snow, winter, inclement weather season, I always have people call and you know say, hey, I lost power for a couple hours. Is the food in my freezer or refrigerator good? First question I'm going to ask them is, what is the temperature in your refrigerator or freezer? 
if you don't have power, you're not going to be able to tell because the uh, digital readout on maybe your new fridge is not working. So I need to know, and the only way to do that is have one of these thermometers hanging in your refrigerator and freezer. Because if you tell me how long you lost power and you tell me what the temperature is, I can tell you what you need to throw away. It very well might not be much. It might be all of it. It just depends on that, the temperature it got to and the amount of time it stayed in that. So no matter what, when we're coming up on hurricane season, always make sure that you keep that refrigerator or that freezer door closed as much as you can. Hopefully you've bought one of these so that makes it a lot easier. Uh, this set also has an, an oven uh, thermometer so you can test um, <clears throat> how hot your, your oven's getting, making sure that it's cooking appropriately. Again, it's a machine just like everything else in, uh, in your kitchen. It'll break, it'll have issues. You have those hot spots in your oven so you can make sure that you're cooking your food uh, to the right temperature, especially as we get up closer to, to Thanksgiving. Um, <clears throat> also, I went to uh, Walmart, or while I was at Walmart, I went into the food meat section and this is one of the little plastic bags you again if you can't see it you've seen it at the store that you pull down from the the top there and you wrap your meat inside of it so you don't have any juices you know getting out in your cart or touching anything else always use one of these when you have uh, meat and uh, I love the ones at Walmart because it actually tells you on here it has a thermometer on the food safety bag and it tells you what your food should be cooked to um, it reminds you to wash your hands. It reminds you to keep your cold food cold, your hot food hot. It reminds you not to cross contaminate. Don't get that chicken anywhere near your, your raw vegetables or you're gonna cause a uh, contamination. And it reminds you to, to cook and chill everything properly. Okay, so this is just a simple reminder. I love these bags. I love that Walmart has all of that information on there. So you can go and get your thermometer, but you can also get the bag that tells you what your, your temperature should be. And if you have any questions about food safety, we have a lot of handouts that are available at the Extension Office. You can always come by or give us a call and uh, I can send you a packet of information. Um, I mentioned earlier when we were uh, talking about T.G. Brooks, one of our sponsors for the show, that um, <clears throat> they have a lot of canning products. And uh, canning is very big in this community. We have a lot of people that already know how to do it. So they might just call and they have a question about a recipe they have or something didn't do it right, it didn't work, it looks weird, it's something. So they call and ask questions. And what I do is I grab my handy ball blue book. This is the guide to preserving book. This is the uh, edition that we recommend right here that you can, you can stop by the extension office if you don't have one of these, if you'd like one. And this has all the recipes, all the information about canning that you need. Um, you can get these on, online at Amazon. Um, again, this is the, the brand or the edition that you wanna make sure that you're getting right here. And um, it has answers, it has recipes, it has how to use a pressure canner, how to do a uh, boiling water bath, it talks about freezing, dehydrating, it has tons of recipes in here, it has a lot of good pictures, it uh, talks about the importance of blanching when you want to freeze your vegetables, how to do everything, it shows you step-by-step -step pictures, so whenever people call and ask me questions, this is kind of the holy grail of, of canning. Um, if people are ever in doubt, I'm always handing these books out when they come uh, to, the, to the office to ask questions. So if you want one, just give me a call. The Extension Office, again, is located at 304 South Morgan Street. You can call me at 336-599-1195. If you're located in Granville, you can call 919-603-1395. And uh, we can definitely get you one of these books and help you learn how to can and make sure you're doing it safely for you and your family. Because canning has changed over the years. Uh, we also have a lot of people that will call us and ask about their, their pressure cookers. Can they can in them? And um, pretty much the rule of thumb is no. I know a lot of manufacturers will say it's okay, but our national food safety experts <clears throat> have said it's it's they really can't get to the temperature that they need to get to and the recipes have not been tested in those pressure cookers so we advise against doing that um, and we advise against using all of your lovely recipes I'm sure you have from your grandmothers or churches or different things when you're when you're canning we really want a tested recipe because um, we've had a lot of people get sick 
So if you're canning products and you're not using an approved recipe, please keep those canned products to yourself. Don't share them with people. Don't give them away as gifts. Don't take them to church because we don't want any uh, foodborne um, illnesses or foodborne outbreaks. Because as I mentioned, there's about 48 million foodborne illnesses every year. And that's basically one in six people get sick every year. And some of them, you know, we just tend to think, oh, I just get the stomach bug. Well, some of it can be a lot more severe than that. There's about um, <clears throat> five different foodborne illnesses that account for most of the, the issues. And um, we've had norovirus in Person County a couple of years ago. We had, I think, two confirmed cases of it. Um, you always hear on the news about E. coli and salmonella. Norovirus actually uh, is about, I think, 60% of the foodborne illnesses. So 60% of those 48 million, no, 8 million illnesses is norovirus um, because it can be spread uh, by the food handler. It's spread by your hands. If I have it and I don't clean up very well after I get sick or go to a public place or just whatever else I can have stuff on my hands germs that I'm passing around it's very contagious and um, it can stay on a surface for you know up to eight weeks so you got to make sure that you when you are cleaning up after an illness you are cleaning and sanitizing and um, that you just make sure that you're not contaminating that you're not preparing food if you are a food restaurant employee if you have illnesses if you have any symptoms, you know, strep throat with a fever, vomiting, diarrhea, any of the nausea, anything, don't go to work. It's very important because you can spread it to all your coworkers. You can spread it to, you know, the public, different things like that. And we want to make sure um, that we're not causing problems because it tends to hit the young children and the elderly even more because their immune system is still developing or it's, it's weaker. We have people who uh, might have a uh, compromised immune system because they're undergoing some kind of uh, treatment for an illness that they have. You know, these individuals right here if they get into contact with a foodborne illness it can severely you know hurt them uh, you know it could lead to paralysis to, to death to uh, kidney failure to all kinds of things just by simply undercooking your food by spreading germs around so when I talk about food safety a lot of people tend to oh we never did that my mom always did this or we've always eaten this or done this Unfortunately, a lot of people have gotten sick over the years because of that, and we've learned from them, unfortunately, from either their illnesses or even their deaths. And we don't want anyone to, to Purse County to have any of those issues, and we definitely don't want an outbreak here. Um, and a lot of the outbreaks, people tend to think it's coming from a restaurant. A lot of the foodborne illnesses actually come from your own home. So making sure that you're following those rules of making sure you're cooking it appropriately to the right temperature. Chicken, you cook it to 165. Um, ground beef is 155. Your steaks and your chops and seafood is 145. Okay. Uh, anything that's stuffed or your leftovers or anything like that, you treat it like it's chicken and you cook it to 165. So technically, if you're heating leftovers in your microwave, you're supposed to cook it to 165. You're supposed to get that thermometer out and you're supposed to check it. Um, so, I mean, these are different rules that we give people to keep them, them safe. It might sound silly, but we've learned from people who have gotten sick, unfortunately. So, um, making sure that you're, you're paying attention to that during, uh, we got Labor Day coming up next weekend. So we're going to have a lot of cookouts and we don't want people sick. Um, the two times a year that most people get sick from foodborne illnesses is, is the summertime. So if you've you know, had those cookouts or those barbecues or those whatever, and you didn't feel so good afterwards, it might have been you know, an issue. Uh, a lot of our foodborne illnesses will come from produce. I think about 70% of the foodborne illnesses actually come from produce. And you might, that might kind of sound familiar there when you keep hearing recalls on lettuce. Uh, we've had tomatoes, we have cantaloupe, we have different things. Because all of those products, all of those produce, you don't cook it. You, you eat it. You might wash it with some water or something, but you don't kill anything. Um, and we don't want you washing your produce with, with Dawn or disc detergent or anything like that. We've had some people doing that. We don't want you doing that either because that will actually leave a chemical residue from the detergent. And then you can get sick from uh, chemicals. <laughs> so we don't want you um, hurting yourself or, or having any problems with that. But making sure that you're um, 
you are rinsing your, your food off, that if it is something you can cook it, you've washed your hands before handling your, your produce. Um, <clears throat> making sure that as I'm preparing my salad, I don't have this raw chicken right next to it. Um, you know, even though Rob's not here, I know every time I'm here, he wants to talk about don't wash your chicken. So that is uh, more, a new study just came out again from the FDA about the importance of not washing your chicken. And we kind of tell people, look, this is our science, but it's still your choice. If you are going to wash your chicken, make sure that you are cleaning up your area. Make sure you don't have any of those produce or anything laying out that you could have any cross contamination washing your hands uh, very uh, very well using different cutting boards using different knives there's a lot of different things with food safety so don't forget that this month of september while you're doing your uh, food safety while you're doing all your cooking and uh, your cookouts for uh, labor day so now we're going to get a word on from our last sponsor i believe it's our pride pimento cheese our pride foods makers of our pride premium pimento cheese spread and dip is made in Roxboro. Pick up some the next time you're shopping at Hurdle Mills Market and Butcher Shop, North Main IGA, Supply Line Discounts in South Boston, Virginia, Food Lion, or Kenyon's Meat Market in Mebane. You can enjoy our Pride Premium Pimento Cheese Spread and Dip at Rock City Grill, Coles Pharmacy, Triss's Espresso, and Clarksville Station. Owl Pride Foods, makers of Owl Pride Premium Pimento Cheese Spread and Dip, remind you that goodness grows in North Carolina. Try the jalapeno added for extra flavor. That's Owl Pride Premium Pimento Cheese Spread and Dip. Welcome back. Um, again, thank you to all our sponsors, Our Pride Pimento Cheese, South Boston Memorial, and T.G. Brooks. We always appreciate their uh, support for our Gardener's Corner and for our Extension Office. Um, always want to support them because they also support our, uh, our farmers and our, our local uh, products that we have here. We're very proud that we have Our Pride Pimento Cheese that we can say that's from, from Roxborough. So just kind of want to have some some reminders as well as just a little bit uh, other information. We've talked about the the my plate, so you can always go to choosemyplate.gov and get all kinds of information. They have handouts, recipes, no matter what your your age is, they have um, <clears throat> things that you can tailor make it to yourself. The meal plans. If you are trying to lose weight, they'll tell you, you know, this is how many calories you need here's a meal plan for eating only you know, 1,500 or 2,000 calories a day. So you can kind of tweak it for you if you're one of those parents like me who uh, sometimes it can be a little difficult to get your kids to eat some of those things that they need to eat. They've got different uh, tricks and tips. And um, the important thing I always tell parents is to, to be that role model. If you're not eating it, why would your kids eat it? Um, or if they see you not liking something, then they're not going to like it, even if they've never tried it. So being open to trying new things, that's what I always will tell my girls, is you don't have to like it, but you have to try it. And I've told many kids in this, in both Person and Granville, uh, that when I've gone to teach nutrition programs at some of the schools, is the importance of trying the, the different foods. We have um, different meals that are served at our schools, so making sure that you're trying some of those fruits and veggies. You, you might actually like it. So um, also, if you are uh, doing okay with the nutrition side of things, but you're kind of struggling with that physical activity, there's always different things that you can do. We've got a lot of you know gyms here in the county. If you're old enough and can uh, go to the senior center, they have a wonderful fitness center. They also have a lot of different classes. Either the senior center or the parks and rec department have a lot of different classes, whether it's a group fitness class, a tai chi, a, uh, a belly dancing class, a uh, lot of different things, line dancing, no matter what you're interested in, we've got a lot of things available in this county. It's a really great county and Granville County is just as, as well. They have very active senior centers, very active um, fitness classes. They're always on, on the go in, in both counties. It's a very good, uh, good set of counties to, to work in and as well as to live in. But if you are looking for other information, you can always go to the uh, National Institute on Aging I get this lovely book, they mail it to me for free. It's the Go For Life campaign. So you can get stuff online or they'll actually send it to you. It has lots of pictures 
about um, different exercises, chair exercises. It talks about the four different types of, of exercise. You know, we're always concerned about that aerobic and that cardio, which is very important because it gets our heart rate going. But making sure you're doing your strength training, making sure you're getting your flexibility and your balance is very important, especially as we age. So they have a lot of good resources no matter your age. Um, and, and, you know, remembering that adults are supposed to get about 150 minutes of physical activity every week. So that's 30 minutes about five days a week. But remember, you don't have to do it just 30 minutes in one shot. You can break it up throughout the day. Do 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, 10 minutes there. Um, I don't care if, you know, if you don't have even that much time. We recommend people sometimes just throughout the day at work or whatever, get up every 30 minutes and move for two minutes. Just get up, whether it's going to the bathroom, walking down the hall, getting some water, hopefully not going to the vending machine and getting something you shouldn't be getting, but just getting up and moving for two minutes. It'll also help you feel better, help you feel less stressed, improve your mood, help you focus on your work, you know, when you are working, that you, you just need physical activity. Both nutrition and physical are, at, are very important and we're not getting enough of it. So we're gonna be talking about different things. Again, September 10th is our Lunch and Learn, Developing a Household and Food Budget. Also, our Healthy Personians Committee in the community that I help serve on is having a fourth annual substance misuse summit. So they're gonna be talking about substance abuse. We're having a good morning coffee hour that September 18th that um, Wednesday, 8 a.m. at Golden Corral. We are having a training by Community Impact of North Carolina to talk about how we can create partnerships in the community to tackle substance abuse. We're having a lunch and we're having a guest speaker that's gonna be talking about vaping. So a lot of us have heard about e-cigarettes and vaping on um, you know online or on the TV. We're gonna have information that entire day about these different topics. The training and the lunch and presentation guest speaker are both free. You do need to register for those. Um, and the Good Morning Coffee Hour run through the Chamber of Commerce is $2 to attend. I'll be there, hope to see you at those events. You can uh, go onto Facebook and look at the Healthy Personians website. It'll have this flyer and these links that you go to register it. And a quick uh, shout out for in November, I know it's a couple months away, but you can be thinking about it. On Tuesdays in November through December 10th, we're gonna be having a free diabetes self-management program. So if you have type two diabetes or you are pre-diabetic, it's a six week program, two hours, two to four o'clock, on Monday, on Tuesdays at the Extension Office, November 5th to December 10th. It is free to register. You can give me a call at 336-599-1195 to register. And uh, again, thank you for having me on the Gardener's Corner and look forward to seeing you another week.